strong demons. I mean, they, they were strong. Yeah. Well, they were beating my men up. They were beating them up. <laughs> they were wearing them out. <laughs> Lord. But yeah, we get food delivered and set free. You know, just because you come to church and shout don't mean you're free. Yeah. Amen. Just because you holler don't mean you got your breakthrough. Amen. And so many of you in here have strongholds and spirits and yeah. powers and things that operate in your life. Yeah. And because people don't have time, yeah. Yeah. so many people leave bound by the enemy. Right. Right. You tell somebody, anything in my life that ain't like God, yeah. I want it out of you. I want you to hear me because some of you may sit there and say, well, I can't have no demon. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, a believer or a Christian cannot have a demon in your spirit. But you got demons attached to your spirit and to your soul and your flesh. Remember, you are you are you are triune being. Your spirit man is saved and ain't gonna be no more saved. You just saved, you see it. But your soul is being saved. Your flesh shall be saved. And that's what demons is attached to. They attach to your emotion. Slap somebody and say, God help my emotion. Yeah. They attach to your flesh. Amen. Some of you in here that think you can't you ain't got nothing probably the main ones. Amen. And I don't discriminate. I don't, I don't discriminate they will feel bad. Praise God. They got some of y'all got demons. Praise God. Pre preachers got demons. Contagious magic, potion magic, candle magic, folk operating in witchcraft, the functional witch, the blind witch. All in our process. Huh? Mm -hmm. You want to break it all. Mm -hmm. Necromancy. Mm -hmm. Oneromancy. Mm -hmm. What's oneromancy? That's witchcraft in your dreams. Yeah. Necromancy, talking to the dead. All right all kinds of things going to break off of you tonight. I'll break off of you tomorrow night. So I want you to come in expectation to receive. Now, tomorrow morning, somebody shout tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. service is a very powerful service. It's an anointing service. It's an impartation service. At that service is where we uh, uh, lay hands on the sick and not the sick, lay hands on you that want God to use you for ministry. Yes, Lord. Amen. How many people know everybody needs a refreshing? Yes, we all need a refreshing. We all need to experience the power of God. Let me tell you, I don't care how long you've been ministering, every now and then you need God to fill you back up. Amen. You need a fresh in feeling and a, a fresh touch. Or you need a stronger impartation to go high. See, some of you in here, it's not that you're not anointed. It's just that you've not it been exposed to a greater anointing to take you to another level. So you, so in the spirit realm, you've hit a lead. Tell somebody, I got to go higher. I got to go higher. Come on, don't talk to that Presbyterian. Find somebody with the Holy Ghost. Prophet Ferguson is going to, you know, they're going to teach. They're going to teach on the anointing, on the impartation, the power of God, and how to receive. Okay? And I just want you to get it and get drunk in it. Just soak in that anointing. You know, the church is in trouble. You know, I, it was very different to me. You know, I was raised in church all my life. And again, maybe because I was just a kid and I didn't know no better. But it seemed like to me, when I was coming up in church, Folk wanted to go to church. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people didn't have an attitude about going to church. Yeah. You know, I, I, I remember folk looking for somewhere to go to church. Especially on Sunday night. Sunday night service. You found you a good Sunday night service. You, if you didn't get your Sunday morning breakthrough, you go find you somewhere on Sunday night that had a washboard and a tambourine. 
You know, only sanctified church has church on Sunday night. Y'all know about washing boys. So, so I think that there must be a hunger to go out the gun again. I don't know what I'm talking about. But there must be a hunger to go out there as the deer panic for the water growth. So panic my soul after the old God. That's my design. The body of Christ all over the world is to motivate you and push you to go after God with every fiber of your being. Say amen. Right? So that will be uh, in these services. So don't miss it. Do not miss any service if you don't have to. And like I said, tomorrow night will be the miraculous. And then, July, the 28th through the 30th, meet me in Charlotte, North Carolina for a mighty outpour of the Holy Ghost. God is going to come. He's going to move. Now listen, now. I didn't mention the 48 hours of prayer that we had in Houston, Texas. Oh, it was awesome. But in Charlotte, I want you to meet me there for a move of God. I don't have the best conference in the world, but I can tell you this. One thing about my meeting, God going to be there. Say amen. And that's one thing I can promise you. Don't nobody show up. Jesus going to be in the room. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Lift your hands. I want to love. Now I want you to hear me. 
I remember, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I want you to hear me, and I need you to understand that when the, you can say now, when the word of the Lord comes, or when a man of God, but especially a prophet or an apostle preaches, they preach by revelation. Right. Amen. All right, hear me good now. You cannot put them in a box that you put everybody else in. You can't put them in a three points in a close. Right now. <laughs> you can't put them in a, a structure. That's right. See, a lot of times you can structure your message so well that you structure God out of it. Right. Sometimes you can be so concerned about holding on to your topic That's good. that you miss what God is saying. Because yeah. Yeah. you don't want to get away from your topic. And sometimes the Holy Ghost is taking you in a different direction because the Holy Ghost sees the needs of the people. Yeah. But you got to understand that when a prophet and apostle, when they minister, they minister by revelation because the Bible says that there are certain things that are only revealed to the apostle and the prophet. They are certain revealed to the apostle and the prophet. So when there's no apostle, when there's no prophet, certain things are hidden from you. If you don't have an apostle or a prophet in your life, there's a certain level you would never go to. Talk back to me, y'all. Because the purpose of the whole fivefold is for the perfecting of the same. So that somebody say, you need to grow up. You need to grow up. Yeah, yes. I'm growing up. <laughs> That's the purpose of the fivefold ministry, to make you grow up. Yeah. For the work of the ministry. Yes. What you mean? The purpose of the fivefold ministry is to grow you up, but you don't have to keep on depending on your pastor. Yeah. Yeah. somewhere yeah. on the screen. Yeah. The purpose of the fivefold ministry is to good The purpose of the fivefold ministry is to bring you into a place of maturity where you don't need nobody to come and cast the devil out your children. You can cast the devil out your own children. You don't need nobody to lay hands on you. I wish I had a church that would talk back to me. You can lay hands on yourself. My Jesus. Come on, slap your neighbor and say, grow up.
Moses showed up to the 17th chapter. And when he showed up, he was standing before the king, telling him in one go read. But according to his word, there's a generation of Elijah that God's getting ready to raise up. You're not going to know where they came from. When do I need to order Melchizedek? Hebrews, the seventh chapter, said Melchizedek didn't have a mother. He didn't have a father. He didn't, didn't have no beginning. He didn't have an end. There's a generation that God is raising up that people can't put their hands on. They don't know where you come from. The only thing they know is that you've been with Jesus. The only thing they know is you came out with power. The Bible say in the second chapter of Luke, Come on. he was in the temple. Come on. Mom and daddy looking for him. But the thing is, the Bible didn't say he was asking questions, he was answering questions. Twelve-year-old answering questions. Y'all gotta stop looking at folk age time out they don't know nothing. Paul told Timothy, let no man despise the day about you. Sometimes your children can get a better revelation of God than you can. Because he said, except you be converted as a little child. Y'all grown folk are the one that miss it. Because you think you know something. But when you humble yourself and recognize, without him, you can do If you tell your child you're going to do something for them, right? And let's say you told them that. Your children don't understand money. No. You know your child, four, five, six years old, they don't understand you. Well, money don't grow on trees. I never forget as a little boy, I went to the, uh, where my mama was trying to get another car, and she was going to get another car, she wanted the car. I, she said, I ain't got the money. I said, this one had a check. <laughs> I didn't know it had to be money in the bank. <laughs> I just thought when you write the check, the money show up. <laughs> well. <laughs> uh, I, I want you this, huh? But when you tell your child you're going to do something, uh, they don't try to figure out how. Oh. Come on now. Yeah. That's how God wants you to be with him. Sitting up trying to come up with how it's going to happen. That ain't none of your business. Just know that I'm going to supply. This man was in the temple answering questions. Because as much as he was a 12 year old child in the flesh, Listen, he was an ancient of days in the street. Come on. He was immortal and mortal at the same time. He was incorruptible and corruptible at the same time. Y'all better catch what I'm saying to y'all. He was eternal and limited at the same time. trying to figure out his age, because they remember when his mama had it. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't this the carpenter's son? Well. Talking about Joseph. Well. Ain't that his son? They remember when the mama had it. <laughs> Jesus always came up with some bad answers, though. <laughs> uh -huh. How are you here? And get what he said. Before Abraham walked. What you mean I am? I'm the same I am. That when Moses said, who shall I tell him? Send them. Tell him. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Hey, hey
She had to deserve that's a man of God. Yeah. 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 She couldn't sit there and be trying to fair, he ain't gonna try to take my money. No. She, yeah. he ain't gonna try to take my food. She, she had time for that. Her discernment had to be worth it. Some of y'all need to ask God for discernment. If you get deserve it, you wouldn't be having to ask yourself all the questions you ask. Them. The Holy Ghost will show you people hard. He'll show you their motive. He'll show you how jacked up they are. Look at him and say, Lord, shop in my deserve. They said all kinds of stuff about me. I said, listen, I said, listen, this is you. I said, I ain't even gonna talk about me no more. Come on. <laughs> I said, go pray. Right. 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 And I right. suspect right. me. Right. I told him, I said, you know, because I might be lying. But he won't tell lies. Right. Right. He the spirit of truth. He won't tell no lie. I can't get Jesus to lie for me. She had to discern him as a man of God. She discerned him as a man of God. She followed instruction. Yes, sir. My God. Some of y'all miss it. Because you won't follow instruction. We're in the mess we're in right now because Eve didn't follow instruction. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm going to say something else in the mess with y'all. Oh, Look at some of the decisions in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Most of you are in jacked up positions right now because you didn't follow instruction. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Look at some of the decisions in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Most of you are in jacked up positions right now because you didn't follow instructions. You didn't follow what he told you to do to the detail. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah.
once she heard whisperings about it, all of a sudden I became anointed again. Yes. Yes. She started hearing what folk were saying. Amen. 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 I said, listen, I don't know your testimony, but he ain't been nothing but a blessing to me. She started listening to the whispers. And it affected her. And, it and slowly, she started pulling back. Didn't see her no more. I ain't paying no time. I knew she'd be back. Let's give it time. About a year later, Every contract Jesus. Jesus. Mm. Have well, guess who she, well, guess who she called? <laughs> the one she heard whisperings about. It. All of a sudden, I became anointed again. <laughs> Whispers didn't matter no more. Yeah. When you get in trouble, you will find whoever got the answer. Hello, hello, hello. 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 Found me. I said, all right. Heard what the Lord said. I said, now this time, stay connected. I said, ain't nothing going to happen immediately. You got to wait a while this time. <laughs> you got to be tested, right? That's right. That's right. You better teach. Amen. She sold. Did nothing happen. Three months, nothing happened. Six months, nothing happened. Nine months, nothing happened. You're going to have to wait now. The 
wisdom of this world. But after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom, do not go. Y'all didn't hear that. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Wisdom of God, the world by wisdom, knew not go. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Yes. The foolishness of preaching a mixtape. Yes. 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 You need to educate yourself. God don't need smart folk. <laughs> you got to be a scholar. God don't deal with them folk. Paul had all that education. And when he met Jesus, found out he didn't know nothing. Don't quiet it here. He counted it all. Shout in here. Require a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews a stumbling block. Unto the Greek food. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ. The power of God and the wisdom of God. Watch this. Because watch this. The foolishness of God.
even that that he had going to be taken away. I 
I said, ma'am, I see a case coming up with your son. I said, so this seed, it'll work well for him. My God. She didn't do it. Came back eight months later, sent me a message on Facebook. My son got eight charges against him. All God asked for was for $100 a charge. Yes. 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 I was just in Mobile, Alabama, prophesied on Sunday night. A woman came, drove all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. I called out and prophesied to her. Hallelujah. And I said to the woman, I said, ma'am, you came from a long way. She said, you're right. I said, you drove a while to get here. She said, yeah, you're right. I said, where you came from? She said, I came from Atlanta. I said, how long was that? She said, five and a half hours. She said, I drove here five and a half hours. I said, right now, you in the process of in the process of losing your house. I said, well, God told you you ain't going to lose your house. And I said, when you go before the judge, God will give you favor with the judge. She stopped screaming and said, I go to court on Tuesday. But I just, when she stood before the judge on Tuesday, the judge said, you got as much time as you want to catch it up. Yeah. They can't even fight back. Yeah. They need a 
gotta be moved by the shepherd because if a sheep is not moved by the shepherd he'll sit there and eat the grass till he die yeah. Yeah. my god mm. Mm. that's what I want God don't want folk to fight for themselves. Mm -hmm. oh, my life. I don't need folk to try to defend themselves. Like, I need somebody totally dependent on me. Y'all hear me? Yes. So Paul said, guess what? He said, guess what? Now I know y'all hear me saying all this stuff. Guess what? Now I know y'all hear me saying all this stuff. He said, but that go for me too. That's right. That's right. He said, when I came to you, mm -hmm. I didn't come with excellency of speech. That's right. I ain't come on smart. I'm smart, now, but I didn't come come to y'all with that. I came to you telling you the testimony of God, and I determined I'm doing nothing among you. Say Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I like verse four. He said, "Was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but with the demonstration of what?" Verse 5 said that your faith mm -hmm. would not stand mm -hmm. in the wisdom of men. That's it. Uh, but in the power of God. Tell your neighbor the power of God is changing something for you, right? <laughs>
say your whole life about to take a turn. He didn't bring you here for nothing. I want you to be here tomorrow night, whatever you got to do. The Spirit of God said, I've seen your prayers. And I shall break and make you feel as if God forgot about you. God said, I've not forgotten you. And I see such a hands of all in the realm of the spirit. You know.
Jacqueline too. You another Jacqueline. I'm not Jacqueline. I'm not just praying for that Jacqueline. But there's another Jacqueline here. Huh? Where, where? Platt. Platt. Come here. Come to me. She said, that's her. Lift your hand. When I lay hands on you, God don't, don't move nothing. When I, when I lay hands on you, God told me to tell you I added 15 years in your life. Shout You got to know move. I, I can't get it right there. I told y'all to shout at me. The Spirit of God said, I'm going to break the yoke of struggle off of you that keeps you praying for everybody, interceding for everybody, believing God for everybody, but seems like ain't nothing happening for you. The Spirit of God told me to tell you, he's going to break that thing up off of you tonight. You didn't come here by accident, nor by coincidence, but there's a strong call of God on your life, but the enemy has attempted to discourage you and make you feel as if God has forgotten about you and he's not seeing, about you and he's not seeing your prayer. When I lay hands upon you, whatever bad report you got is about to be canceled. The Lord said, I'm going through your bloodstream. He also told me to tell you, women in your family have strokes, but you ain't going to have no stroke. This is the season where I'm going to restore to you the years and the canker worm, the polar worm, the caterpillar, and the locusts have eaten away. And God said, I'm healing you from the hurt that preacher did to you. Hey, come on, shout, shout. Stop right there. I told you stop back there. You can go back. 
two steps. Okay, now you went three. I said two. Okay, come on one step. Thank you. If you had, you had problems in math at school, huh? Okay. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Trench your hands on. There are 30 people in this room under this anointing. You don't want to do it? You think Brahma Khan come take them? Keep your money. I beg you, keep it. But there are 30 people. I'm gonna minister to three more, maybe three or four more people. But there are 30 people in this room. I'm challenging you tonight to sow a seed of $216. 30 of them. And this is what I'm gonna tell you. Watch what God do for you through the rest of this year. Shut your hands over this one. This woman been in a fight. She been in a struggle and she ain't told nobody. God said that God said that there are water spirits coming against her. Now if I had time, I'd explain to you. But there are demons that live under the water. And there are water spirits that are fighting her that are assigned to her address. spirits fighting her but it's really has nothing to do with her it is a territorial spirit assigned to the street she live on God reveals to redeem yeah But it's a sign, I take a little time, be careful where you live at. There is a spirit assigned to a street from the water. Thank you. 
praise God for you coming here. Sale, the sale of Sound Avenue. 
That's your street. Come in, wife. Come on, hold his hand. Since you fell over, I want you to get some too. Shut your hands for one. I'm going to pray for y'all. God going to favor y'all. I'm going to ask y'all to give a certain amount tonight. That $200, $260. I want you to honor God. The Spirit of God told me to tell you that some workforce owes you something. And God's going to make this money. $216 move quickly, quickly. 